Teresa and welcome to my channel today. Thank you for joining me. We're going to be doing some printing but before we start printing I'm going to show you how simple it is to create stamps, stencils and masks so you don't need to go out and buy them from a craft store if, if you don't have that opportunity or if you just want to do something that is custom, something that's individual to you. It's a really simple and straightforward process and great fun. I'm going to be providing this template for you and you can create um, foam stamps, cardboard masks and hot glue stencils from this template. And we're going to use those to create some beautiful under the sea themed prints that I will come back in another video and show you um, how to create a really interesting project with them. But just by using some acrylic paint on our gel plate we've created this really nice variety of interesting prints and I've got a whole selection of stamps, stencils and masks that I can reuse in other projects too. So I'm going to clear these out of the way, get set up with my plate and I'll be back to show you how to do everything. I've gone for an undersea theme for today's project and I've drawn out some simple shapes to use as my templates. Now I've made this available for you to download and print out yourself if you want to. I'll pop the link in the description below. Please feel free to use this if you want to. If you want to go ahead and draw your own shapes that's absolutely fine as well. But I've gone for some simple abstract seaweed shapes, starfish, sea urchin, bubbles, very simple um, shapes today to create some stamps, stencils and masks. Now to create my stamps I'm going to be using some craft foam. Um, this is just the, the so the two three millimeter thick craft foam. Quite often find it in the children's craft section. Absolutely perfect for making um, little stamps. I've also got some heavyweight card stock here. You could use sort of cereal box card if you don't have any um, card stock in your craft supplies. And that's just to back the foam onto so you've got something to hold on to to use it. I've got some scissors and a pencil and some glue. And I've also got my hot glue gun here, which is what I'm going to be using to make the stencils. Quite minimal supplies today. Don't need um, a great deal of specialist equipment at all. And then obviously a bit later on when we come to do the printing, I'm going to get my gel plate and paint out, but I'll go into that when we get to get to that point later. Now, if you print out or draw out your own templates, use, use a black marker if you're drawing your own template. So you've got quite a heavy line because I'm going to create a stencil first and I'm going to use the hot glue on a craft mat. Now, this is a nonstick craft mat. And if you print out or draw out um, something with a bold line, I don't know if you can see it there on the camera, you can pop that underneath the mat and it will show through. We can trace through that. It makes life really, really simple. So I'm just going to set my hot glue gun to heat up and I'll show you how straightforward it is to create a stencil. Now these stencils, they are fairly fragile. You'll get some use out of them, um, a little bit of repeated use, but at some point they're, they're going to probably crack or split apart. So they're not going to last as long as a shop-bought um, stencil. But for, for today's project, I might not want to use these shapes again. So I'm quite happy to create something that will work for the duration of this project. And if it doesn't last any longer than that, so be it. It doesn't matter. I can soon make another one. Once your glue gun's heated up, you, the simplest way to do this is to just literally trace around the line that you can see through the mat with your hot glue. Don't worry if it's a bit wiggly or there's a few lumps and bumps in it. It all adds to the charm of what you're creating. Once you get back to the start, make sure it's joined. You don't want there to be any gaps in your lines because obviously that's going to be a weak point, a break, um, and, and it's going to cause it to, to fall apart more quickly. Now, obviously, this is going to this has nothing really holding it together in the middle. So I'm just going to add in 
a couple of support lines really just to add a bit of strength to it I know it's not on the original template but that doesn't matter but we just want to give this a little bit more stability for when we're using it so we can let that cool down I'm going to go on and do one of these seaweed um, designs next and just creating in exactly the same way tracing through where that line's showing again just added some extra strengthening in the middle of that I'm going to let that dry cool down and set I'm going to do this small starfish And keep going until you've done as many or as, as few of these as you want. Let them cool down. Once they're set, we can remove them. So just, you know, mind your fingers. Obviously, if the glue is still hot, you don't want to burn yourself. And you should find that it will peel off your craft mat. You can just get your finger under there. You could use um, a little palette knife if you want to, just to help it uh, along. And just gently remove it. Once you've created your stencils, just put them aside for the time being. Um, just created another one there. Put these to one side and we'll move on and make some stamps. And in order to do that, you'll want to cut out your template. So either cut up the one you've got or print out another copy and just cut, cut out the shapes. And then we're going to take our piece of craft foam and just draw around the template. You can use a pencil for this, that's absolutely fine. We're just going to draw around and then we can cut out the shape with a pair of scissors. Once you've drawn round your templates, just cut out the foam um, with a pair of scissors and glue onto your piece of stiff card. This is just the this is the Cosmic Shimmer acrylic glue that I use all the time. There is a link to this, I believe, in the Amazon storefronts listed below in the description. But pretty much any um, tacky glue, PVA glue, should do the job, no problem. I'm just going to stick that down onto the cardstock and we'll let that dry. I cut out the small holes using my crocodile punch and then I saved um, the little dots that I'd punched out to do my um, bubbles stamp which I just cut out freehand the larger circles and then use the little ones that I'd punched out and stuck those on and once you, those have dried um, just cut around the piece of card and you've got your stamps so we've got our hot glue stencils that we created at the beginning we have our foam stamps and then the templates that we cut out of our card to create the stamps we can use as masks and what we've got now is a really nice collection of coordinating items um, to create our prints so I'm going to move these to one side get my gel plate out get my paint out and get ready to start doing some printing today I'm going to use my 8 by 10 inch jelly art gel printing plate so I've got that, I've got my brayer, this is a speedball rubber brayer. The paint I'm using today is some Dino Wakely Media the um, acrylic paint. I had a little tidy up the other day, forgot I'd got these so I'm going to use these because they're quite nice colours. So I've got marine, peacock, eggplant, Sedona, and the last one I've got there is Boff. I'm going to use those, but any acrylic paint will do. Or indeed, you know, if you've watched other videos that I do, you know that it doesn't have to be acrylic paint that you use on your plate. But today I'm going to be using those. 
and I've got myself some decent weight um, paper or you could use a light card. This that I'm using is from this pad here, which is a heavyweight cartridge paper. It's a smooth surface, you know, all media. So good for painting, sketching, you know, drawing. It's uh, 225 GSM. And as I say, it's a nice smooth finish. You could use something like that. Um, I could have chosen this one here. Again, smooth finish on that one. Suitable for all sorts of media. Um, also have things like the mixed media pad here. Um, again, decent weight. The Faber-Castell one has a little bit more texture to it, a, a very slight tooth to it, um, but not textured by any means, not in the way that watercolour paper or something like that is textured. If all that you have got is just, you know, a basic printer paper, you can use that. But I know what I want to do with these prints when I finished and I wanted something that's got a little bit more body to it than a, a basic paper. So it's, you know, it's not super heavyweight, but it is a, a lot sturdier than a basic paper. And I've got myself, I think about eight or ten sheets here. I'm not sure how many prints I'm going to do today. But we're just going to work um, creating some nice sort of abstract backgrounds using the stamps, the stencils, the masks that we've been creating earlier on. And we'll see what we've got when we come back at the end. So I'm going to begin by popping some paint on my plate. I'm going to choose a couple of colours. And use the brayer to spread this out until I've got a nice even coating. I'm going to pop on a couple of the stencils that we made. And take my piece of cardstock and pop it down and press down. Now bear in mind these homemade stencils are quite dimensional um, so you want to give them a good press down. If you want to take another brayer and brayer over the back you can do. I kind of like to use my fingers I can I can feel where I'm applying pressure But we're going to be doing several layers of printing, so, you know, don't worry if it doesn't come out as, as clear as you are expecting it to. So we can remove those and they will have paint on the back of them. So we could indeed pop them down face down onto the, the plate and see what we get on another print see what we can pick up off there.
and that's created another interesting effect as a again starting point we're going to be building layers on these I'm going to pop some more paint on my plate now Again, choosing a few colours. And brayering to create a thin layer of paint. I'm going to choose a couple of my stamps and press the stamp down to lift some paint. Now you can pop that stamp back down in a different place and it'll transfer some of the paint over or you can stamp off onto a scrap piece of paper. And I'm going to use this wavy one next. And I'm going to take this first print that we did and line it up reasonably well. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to trim this when we're finished. And that's created a second layer. Still paint left on this plate, so I'm going to take my other print that I did and pop that down for a second layer too. Finally, I'm going to use the masks. So again, popping some paint down. Just brayering that out. And I think I want to just use this one as well, I think, as well as using the masks. So I'm just going to go around the edge. I'm thinking this might frame the print quite nicely. I'm 
and then I'm going to pop some of these down like so take the prints that we've already done create the third layer. We can remove these carefully because we can reuse these because this is quite sturdy. So we'll get uh, a number of uses out of these before they start to lose their integrity. So just carefully remove them from the plate. I'll take my other print and pop that down for a third layer. So I'm going to continue and create some more prints in this exact same way using the same process. I'm going to start off with the stencil, then move on to the stamps and then finish with some masks. And I'll show you what I've created at the end. And here are my completed prints. I think I've done eight um, altogether, two sets, um, four sets of two, should I say. And this was the first one that you saw me do along with the uh, print that where I kept taking a ghost print each time and I really like the fact that we get the, the bold silhouette on one and the, the more sort of detail on the other and I'm going to put these to good use in the project that I'm going to create with these so that was the first two that we did then I went on to create this pair of prints again nice silhouette one and then one with more detail in then this was my third set. Love how this bright orange colour is coming through there and all the detail that we've got on that one. And my final one here and the final ghost print there. This one really like the detail that's come up from the stencils on that. Now, as this has been quite a long video already, I'm going to save this project for a second video and that's going to go up either next week or the week after. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll get it up pretty soon. Um, but I'm going to be creating a concertina journal type thing. I'm going to be working into the prints a little bit more. So I'm going to use some of these bold silhouettes to, to good use um, by working on them as well. So please keep your eyes out for part two of this video. But as always, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you find the template useful. Don't forget to go and check out the link and download and print that out if you want to use that yourself. And I shall be back again soon with another video. But that's all for now. Bye.